Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the expenditure cycle. The expenditure cycle is one of the six cycles that we need to learn about whether we are an accounting information students or studying for the CPA exam. And those cycles are the revenue cycle, the expenditure cycle, the one that we're going to be discussing in this topic, the financing cycle, the production manufacturing cycle, HR and payroll, reporting and general ledger cycle. Now, what is expenditure or the expenditure cycle? What are we discussing here? Well, we're discussing cost or expenses incurred to run the company. The expenditure cycle encompasses or touches upon many aspects of the company, just like all the other cycles. All these cycles are basically interrelated, frankly. So how does the expenditure cycle relate to other cycles? Well, the expenditure cycle needs money from financing. Okay, so it, it, we need to bring money from financing. Then we're going to buy material, raw material, incur expenses, and that's going to feed into the production process, assuming we have a production process, assuming we are, we are a manufacturing company. Also, the expenditure cycle would touch upon HR because when you have employees, you have to pay those employees and it goes through the expenditure cycle. Also, the production process, assuming we have a production process, feeds into the revenue. If, you're, if you are manufacturing something, you need to sell it. Then also the expenditure cycle will feed into the general ledger. So simply put, all the cycles are interrelated. The point is, is to understand why are they important? How do they relate to each others? Now, from a T-account perspective, it's very important to understand from a T-account or from a journal entry perspective, how everything fits together. And to illustrate the point, remember, when you have an expenditure cycle, first you're going to buy something, you're going to buy something, then you're going to pay for it. So you buy something on credit. So what I'm going to show you is how things are, how many things are affected or affect the accounts payable, which is buying on credit and then paying the expenditure cycle. Well, we might buy raw material. So we debit raw material, we credit accounts payable. Well, that's going to affect the the purchasing cycle. We might buy property, plant, and equipment. Then that's going to increase the payable. We might purchase prepaid expenses on credit. Now, this is unusual, but that's fine. Sometimes you might buy prepaid expenses and pay for them later. You might incur selling general and administrative expenses. You're going to increase those and you're going to accrue them. You might incur manufacturing overhead as a control account. Well, that's going to go up and accounts payable will go up as well. So notice all these activities, that's a lot of activities within the company. They're going through the expenditure, the buying on credit and paying later cycle. Now we also have purchase discounts. When we have a purchase discounts, that's gonna reduce the accounts payable. We might also have a purchase returns and allowances. That's also gonna reduce the accounts payable. And the big, the big debit is paying the balance. When we pay the balance is, that's gonna be the big debit because we have to pay all of those now and we're gonna credit, we're gonna credit the cash. So the, notice I, 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 ended, I identified one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight accounts revolves around buying stuff on credit. So the process is, is involved from a journal entry accounting perspective. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start today, no obligation, no credit card required. Now let's take a look at the expenditure cycle from an operating perspective. I'm gonna break the expenditure cycle into four steps just to make it easy for you to follow. First, there's a processing of purchase orders. We start with the purchase order, we want to buy stuff. Then we're gonna be receiving the goods or the services. We're going to be recognizing a liability. Then we're going to be making the payment or the disbursements. And they go in order. First, you buy, you receive the goods, you create the liability, you make the payment. Now, in this session, I'm going to identify the risks and controls in each process and identify the documents. Now, when I mention a document, 
if you're not familiar with it, I will explain it. I would suggest you Google it just to kind of take a look at it. It just makes it easier for your learning process. And if you know anything about my teaching, if I have a list of items, I'm going to go through each step separately, identifying the risks, control, documents involved. Starting with the process purchase order. So this is processing purchase, purchase order, which is step one. When we want to buy something, first we will start by something called a form called purchase requisition. And it's basically a form. If let's assume you want to buy a tablet for one of your employees. You work in a restaurant and you want them to take the order on a tablet. So you fill out this purchase requisition form, PR, asking to buy a tablet. So this is the purchase requisition. Form used to request authorization to purchase. So what you're asking for is, I want to buy it. Do you give me the permission to buy it? Let's assume you, we have a purchasing department. Now you will send this to the purchasing department. So it's a separate department, the purchasing department. And in the purchasing department, we have a purchasing agent or purchasing personnel. At this point, assuming your purchase requisition was approved by your supervisor, they will issue a purchase order. It means the tablet is approved by someone who has the authority to approve it. Now the purchase order, again, I'm highlighting the forms in yellow. You, It's a form used for order after it has been authorized. So first, first the purchase requisition, it has to be authorized by someone. They'll put their initial on it approved. Now all these document, documents, all the documents that I mentioned in this recording, they're all they're, they're old pre number, sequentially used and accounted for. And we might have and we will have multiple copies because the 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 forms they go to different departments. Pre numbered means every form has a unique number and it's number sequentially. So we, we know if we use purchase number order one, we cannot use it again because it has been used. Then the sec the next for the next purchase we use purchase order number two. So we are working in sequence so we can easy account for that. Now the purchase, the purchase order will go to the accounting department and to the receiving report. Now, in some CPA review courses, in some textbook, they say a purchase order. Sometimes they say the purchase requisition and the purchase order. It doesn't really matter whether it's the purchase requisition or the purchase order. Remember, they go together. No purchase order can be approved unless the purchase requisition is approved. I believe they're the same thing in a sense. A purchase order is an approved purchase requisition. But remember, they will send a document to the accounting department, document to the receiving department, telling them to expect this tablet and a copy to the accounting department, telling them we initiated the process of buying those tablets. Now, what are the risks involved in this step for, from an operating perspective? For one thing, we only need to be buying stuff or goods that we need that's necessary for the company. The risk here is you could be buying stuff that we don't really need, or we can buy stuff at inflated prices. How so? Using kickbacks, fraud, basically you're buying from your friends, you're buying from your relatives, you're buying from your spouse, and by doing so, you are buying it at inflated prices, or there's some sort of a kickback where you'll get money from buying from us. What are some of the controls that you can implement at this process, at this stage in the process? Approval process for all vendors. So you cannot just select any vendors and buy from them. Before the vendors is entered into the system, it has to be approved and not anyone can add a vendor. So we have to have a review process be before we can add a vendor. And sometimes vendors, vendors numbers, they could have a secret formula. For example, let's assume you work at a company and you want to enter a vendor into the system and you, automatically you just wanted to create a number, account number for a vendor and you did one, seven, eight, seven, five, just randomly selecting those numbers. Well, guess what? The computer system or your internal control could have a secret formula where every account number means something. Means what? For example, the account number, when you add one plus seven plus eight plus seven plus five, let's add them up. Just kind of, this is a, this is an illustration. I don't know what I'm gonna come up with. One plus seven equal eight, plus eight equal to 16. 16 plus seven is 23 plus five is 28. So when you add up all the digits, they have to be divisible by, let's assume three. Okay, and this is not divisible by three. And the person that's entering those numbers, they will not know this. Now it won't it won't only be divisible by three because you know if I put plus four, 
then we'd have 27 it will be divisible by 3 and it will be an okay all what I'm saying is you'll have some sort of a secret formula this is just a simple illustration of it where when you add up all the digits they have to mean something and it's not that simple it has to be so unique so this is part of the controls at this process another control is you will make all your purchasing agents or pur purchasing department people have a disclosure telling you if they have any relationship with the vendor or just prohibiting any related party transaction look if you are if you are, have any relationship with a vendor that's it we can no longer buy from that vendor so this is step one risks control and you can also what you can do at this at this stage is analytics what is analytics comparing cost to budget so if we have a certain budget let's see if if the cost is in more than the budget or we can compare the prices that we are paying to market prices to see if we are paying fair prices also we can run analytics on purchase agent trend for example if we can see an agent is buying more than others or an agent is buying more more disproportionate disproportionate amount from a specific vendor so that's could be a red flag user analytics step two after we purchase after we process the purchase order now we're going to be receiving the goods the receiving department would receive a, would, would prepare from a blank receiving report it means it's empty what items did they receive so once the company that sent us the item the receiving the receiving department will prepare a report we should not have the you know the quantity there or anything which we, we should make them count and fill in the receiving report so a blank receiving report is better and here the form is the receiving report prepared at the time of the when the goods are purchased and also we there's an inspection report in case there's something wrong with the product we will inspect it and add it there at this point we should match the purchase order now we have the purchase order we filled out the receiving report they should match that's a form of control what risks are what risks could appear in this department in the receiving department we could be receiving goods for unordered unordered goods we never ordered them now we receive them we might prepare a receiving report now we have a liability to pay for them and we're not supposed to uh, not counting received goods properly or inspecting the goods so we received goods um, we ordered 10 we received eight the people did not count it they say it's 10 and we in actuality we received eight what are some of the controls here for one thing segregation of duties people that place the order should not be able to receive it uh, people that count people that count an, an inspect should not be able to change the record or uh, the, the change the record in the purchasing department and here what you can do you could automate the procedures for example you could have a relationship with your supplier they will do the counting they will give you a barcode with it or f or an rfid and you'll be able to scan the items and you would know exactly how many items based on their counting so basically you kind of transfer the control to them the third step now we receive the items now we have a liability when do we record a liability there's something called a three-way matching now it's a three-way or four-way i'm going to explain it why it could but most cpa companies most cpa prep firms they use the three-way first you have a vendor invoice again it's in yellow it means it's a document a vendor invoice is something sent from the supplier the seller the vendor showing the amount owed so let's assume we bought this tablet from apple apple will send a an invoice telling us you owe us you know you know 1500 for this tablet also the accounting department remember they receive a purchase order and a purchase requisition so basically i'm going to count them as one okay so purchase order three we have a receiving report from the receiving department saying that we did receive the tablet then we match those three together this is called the three-way matching indicating now we have a liability now some companies they once they have a purchase order and a receiving report they they do prepare the liability sometime you would wait for the vendor invoice also in this in this step we could have what's called a debit memo in case we return some items or the items were damaged then they would reduce our the amount this is called a debit memo showing the amount that's removed that's reduced now you need to understand what's about voucher file a voucher file is those three items together a file include all the documents mentioned thus far in vendor invoice purchase order and receiving report and simply put it looks like a file like literally a yellow file with the paperwork in it because when i was in practice when i was an auditor i worked a lot with a voucher file so simply put i will go when when we'll do an audit i'll go to the bank statement and i would select a number like you know from the disbursement like uh, i don't know 
three, $3,460. We bought supplies. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to go and see if we have a vendor invoice, if we have a purchase order, if we have a receiving report. If we have those three, good. This disbursement is legitimate. So this is basically how you would check to see to see how the system work. And I remember I, I audited in a, a German company, I'm not gonna name it, in the Lehigh Valley, and they were very meticulous in their vendor invoices. They were, I just, it was so impressive the way everything was organized. But what are the risks in this step? Well, receiving invoices for goods never purchased. Well, we receive an invoice, we think we received the goods, maybe someone in the receiving department preparing fake receiving reports, sending it to us, that's a risk there. How about not paying? That's not really a risk. Why? Because if you don't pay for an item, because if you don't prepare a liability for an item, well, guess what? Apple or the supplier will contact you. Uh, what are some of the controls here? The, the three-way matching is a control here. Budgetary controls, basically knowing that you are paying for too much. Analytics, looking for duplicate payments. That could be a problem. You're making the payment twice, looking for duplicate liabilities. Um, just running analytics on your APs. Segregation of duties. Again, the people that record the liability should not be able to place the order, should not be able to receive any items. Segregation of duties. Also the voucher system, which is the three-way the three -way matching, having all the documents in order before we make the cash payment. The last step is the cash payment or the cash disbursement. This is the most important step because that's it. Once you send the check, it's gone. The money is gone. Again, the people that are in charge in this department, they will do the three-way matching again. They would look at everything. And this is high activity risk, high activity in this area. It's a, it's a lot of risk. Now I'm writing the check or sending the payment. Okay. And the auditor, the auditor, the document that auditor examine associated with this activity is a check. So when you are auditing, you'd look at the check and you go backward to see if there are supporting documents. What are the risks? Well, guess what? Paying for the wrong amount. Now, now, if we pay more, no one's going to complain. If we pay less, well, the vendor will complain. Making multiple payments for the same invoice. That could be a risk because we did not close the voucher file, we did not stamp it as paid, because once it's paid, we have to stamp it. Not taking advantage of discount, that could be a risk. We are offered a discount, we're not, we're not taking advantage of that discount. What are some of the controls that we can implement? Automate the process. For example, if we are giving a discount, let's make sure the payment is cut within the discount period. Automate the process and the matching process. So if you have a computerized system where everything is electronically prepared, then the computer system will match the vendor invoice, will match, will match the receiving report, will match the purchase order. So you would automate the process. There is no room for mistake. Password for electronic fund transfer. Not everyone can do it. Only people with the appropriate, with the appropriate authority. Again, segregation of duties. People that make the payment make the cash payment they cannot place the purchase order they cannot receive the goods they cannot record the liability they can only review the material and cut the check what should you do now go to far hat lectures work additional look at additional resources that's going to help you in understanding the business cycle good luck study hard and stay safe